Hello learners. Today we are going to discuss about volcanoes. This is the sixth part of the series of geography programs Earth's processes. As we discussed in the previous sessions, the earth keeps on changing in some or the other manner and somewhere some movement is taking place. Like earthquakes, volcanoes or volcanic eruptions are also sudden happenings that take place on the earth's surface. Though the occurrence of volcanoes is sudden, but the process below the earth's surface takes place gradually. Do you know what a volcano is? A volcano is a vent or opening from where gases, ashes and molten drop material called lava escape to the ground. So, any kind of opening from where materials existing underneath the earth's surface come out is a volcano. It can be like a mountain from where molten material and gases are coming out or like a fissure from where lava is oozing out or it can be like a hole from where hot mud is coming out. You must be wondering, from where do these gases, ashes and or lava come out? In the previous sessions and especially when we discussed about the interior of the earth, we talked about the layers inside the earth's surface. So, you know that the layer below the solid crust is mantle. It has higher density than that of the crust. The mantle contains a weaker zone called asthenosphere. It is from this that the molten rock material find their way to the surface. The material in the upper mantle portion is called magma. Once it starts moving towards the crust or it reaches the surface, it is referred to as lava. So, a volcano is composed of a vent from where the magma comes out, a crater which is a bowl shaped structure at the mouth of the volcano, a magma chamber where the hot magma is stored below the earth's surface and a cone which is formed by the solidification of lava and ashes etc. These parts make the structure of a volcano. Do you know not only lava but there are lots of other things also that come out during a volcanic eruption? The material that reaches the ground includes lava flows, pyroclastic debris, volcanic bombs, ash and dust and gases such as nitrogen compounds, sulfur compounds and minor amounts of chlorine, hydrogen and iron. Well, all the volcanoes are not the same and of the same type. A volcano is called an active volcano if gases, ashes and or molten rock material called lava are being released or have been released out in the recent past. Mount Etna near Sicily in Italy is an example of active volcano. Otherwise, when nothing has come out in the recent past, then such volcano is called a dormant volcano. Narkandom is a dormant volcanic island of the Andaman and Nicobar Island group in India that last erupted about 5 lakhs 60,000 years ago. These are the types of volcanoes on the basis of frequency of eruption. Volcanoes are also classified on the basis of nature of eruption and the form developed at the surface. Depending upon these two characteristics, there are five major types of volcanoes. First is shield volcanoes. 
The Shield volcanoes are one of the largest of all the volcanoes on the earth. The Hawaiian volcanoes are the most famous examples of such volcanoes. So, can you make out the characteristics of such volcanoes by looking at the picture? Let me tell you. These volcanoes are mostly made up of basalt, a type of lava that is very fluid when erupts. As the greater fluidity makes lava spread for this reason, these volcanoes are not high rise and steep, but they become explosive if somehow water gets into the vent. Otherwise, they are characterized by low explosivity. The upcoming lava moves in the form of a fountain and throws out the cone at the top of the vent and develops into cinder cone. The second type of volcanoes is composite volcanoes. These volcanoes are characterized by eruptions of cooler and more viscous lavas than basalt. Here, by viscous, I mean thicker. These volcanoes often result in explosive eruptions. Along with lava, large quantities of pyroclastic material and ashes find their way to the ground. This material accumulates in the surrounding areas of the vent openings leading to formation of layers and this makes the mounds appear as composite volcanoes. The third type of volcano is caldera. These are the most explosive of the Earth's volcanoes. They are usually so explosive that when they erupt, they tend to collapse on themselves rather than building any tall structure. Collapsed depressions are called calderas. There is an important point to be noted here. The explosiveness of these volcanoes indicate that the magma chamber supplying the lava is not only huge but is also in close vicinity. The fourth type is the flood basaltic provinces. These volcanoes outpour highly fluid lava that flows for long distances. Some parts of the world are covered by thousands of square kilometers of thick basalt lava flows. There can be a series of flows with some flows attaining thickness of more than 50 meters. Individual flows may extend for hundreds of kilometers. Okay, tell me, can you think of an example of such volcanic place in India? Recall the physiography of India that you have read in the previous classes. Can you think of a physiological division which is made up of lava flow? Yes, the Deccan Trap of India presently covering most of the Maharashtra Plateau are a much larger flood basalt province. You know, it is believed that initially the trap formations covered a much larger area than the present. The fifth and the last type of volcano is mid-oceanic ridge volcanoes. As the name suggests, these volcanoes occur in the oceanic areas. You must have heard that there is a system of mid-ocean ridges more than 70,000 kilometers long that stretches through all the ocean basins. The central portion of this ridge experiences frequent eruptions. So, now you know what volcanoes are, what is the structure of a volcano and what are the five major types of volcanoes. Volcanoes tend to change the Earth's surface in some or the other manner. They also result in the formation of landforms. Some of these landforms are formed below the Earth's surface and few others 
above it. The landforms formed inside the Earth's surface are known as intrusive forms and these include first one, batholiths that are large body of magmatic material that cools in the deeper depth of the crust and develop in the form of large domes. They appear on the surface only after the denudational processes remove the overlying materials. Second is Lacolith. These are large dome-shaped intrusive bodies with a level base and connected by a pipe-like conduit from below. It resembles the surface volcanic domes of composite volcano, only these are located at deeper depths. Third one includes lapolith, facolith and sills. When the magma moves upwards and if it finds gaps in the horizontal rock strata, then the magma gets accumulated in these gaps. It may get rested in different forms. In case it develops into a saucer shape concave to the sky body, it is called lapolith. A wavy mass of intrusive rocks at times is found at the base of synclines or at the top of anticline in folded igneous country. These are called facoliths. Anticline is the crest of a fold and syncline is the trough of a fold. On the other hand, near horizontal bodies of the intrusive igneous rocks are called sill or sheet, depending on the thickness of the material. The thinner ones are called sheets, while the thick horizontal deposits are called sills. The fourth and the last type of intrusive forms is dike. When the lava makes its way through cracks and the fissures developed in the land, it solidifies almost perpendicular to the ground. It gets cooled in the same position to develop a wall-like structure. Such structures are called dikes. You will be surprised to know that Dikes are the most commonly found intrusive forms in the western Maharashtra area of India. Volcanoes are natural hazards that cannot be avoided. But with timely warning and management, the loss of life and property can be avoided or at least reduced. I will tell you an interesting story. Mount Vesuvius is located in Italy. It is although a relatively young volcano, but it remained dormant for centuries before the great eruption of 79 AD. This eruption that took place in Vesuvius buried the cities of Pompey, Oplontis and Stabiae under ashes and lapilli and the city of Herculaneum under a mud flow. When it erupted, the ancient city of Pompeii was completely covered with ash. Clouds of ashes erupted from Vesuvius covering the whole city with tons of ashes. The eruption was sudden and the amount of ash coming out was so much that many people and organisms could not escape. They got covered with ash and died. The ash when got mixed with water got hard like rock. The flesh and bones etc. decayed leaving behind the shapes of those people made up of ashes. Many such figures were found after years of the catastrophic volcanic eruption of Vesuvius. This is one of the horrific stories of the history where volcanic eruptions 
took place and changed the whole landscape of these cities. Now you know about volcanoes. Let us go through few questions to make sure you have understood the concept well. First one is, the source of magma is blank. Choose the right answer. First option is core. Second option is mantle and asthenosphere. And third option is just below the crust. The second question is, choose true or false for these statements. Pyroclastic materials, lava, gases and ashes etc. come out of a volcano. Second statement is, basaltic lava erupts most exclusively and form huge cones. Third statement is, batholiths are formed above the ground and get buried after landslides occur. The third question is, mark the location of mid-oceanic ridge in the given map of the world. I hope you enjoyed knowing about volcanoes, structure of a volcano, types of volcanoes and how volcanoes can affect human beings. Till now, we discussed about origin of the earth, interior of the earth, origin of atmosphere, plate tectonics, earthquakes and volcanoes. We will come up with another topic in the next session. Till then, try looking at photographs and videos of some of the volcanic eruptions that occurred in the world in the recent past.